Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Sparks, Nevada. I'm Lori Stevens, the church administrator, and we're glad you're here. Pastor Morley is preaching the second part of his sermon series on doubt and unbelief. His main thought is that even though we struggle to believe in Christ, Jesus still accepts us in our struggles. There is a powerful story of a grief-stricken father who desperately wants to believe Jesus can help his son. He finally cries out, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. This was a beautiful display of honesty that is much needed in every Christian life and our faith relationship with our Savior. So, as always, please share these videos with your family and friends and like and subscribe. Thank you. This morning is part two on the subject, struggling with faith. Helping our unbelief or dealing with doubt. Our doubt can come from tragedy and disappointment, but doubt can also desperately drive us to search for answers and for help and for hope. We've already looked at doubting Thomas. Today we're going to look at an interaction that Jesus had with a father. Jesus met this man who was in desperate need of the Lord to heal his son. But the father struggled to fully believe that Jesus could do it. Take your Bibles, the Word of God, and turn to Mark chapter 9, starting with verse 17. This man's son was possessed by an unclean spirit, and he would go into convulsions. So this man was desperate. He had been dealing with this sick child for a long time. Now I want you to know this morning that we can believe in the Lord and struggle to believe in the Lord at the same time. But Jesus will accept us even in our struggle. Look there at chapter 9, verses 17 through 19. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered him and said, O faithless genera generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. This man heard Jesus was in town and was in a crowd of people, so he decided to give it a shot. In our text, we see a desperate man dealing with an issue that many people struggle with. Some people cannot seem to overcome this issue, that is, the struggle to believe in Jesus. We want to believe, but something inside of us will not allow belief to happen. If you are a Christian then what do you do when you struggle to believe? There are many questions that arise, like, am I a terrible person? Has God rejected me for my doubt? Am I really saved? Am I really a Christian? Will the church kick me out? Are you afraid to share your struggle to believe because you think you are the only one dealing with doubts? Just remember, we can believe in Jesus and struggle to believe at the same time, but Jesus will accept us even in our struggle. We need to know that doubt is not a place for us to live forever. But there are times in our Christian life we may struggle with our faith. And if we do not understand a few things about doubt, Satan can use our doubt to drive a deep wedge between ourselves, the Lord, and the church, and other Christians. Look there at Mark 9, verses 20, 21, and 22. Then they brought him to Jesus. And when he saw Jesus, immediately the spirit convulsed him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And the father said, from childhood. And he often has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. So Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? 
Imagine as a father or a mother seeing your son from childhood going through what this father and son were experiencing. How would you feel? Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to the boy? The man answered, since childhood. You can feel the pain in the words of the man as he explains the, the situation to Jesus. The fact that this father came to Jesus with this problem shows that he wants to believe that Jesus can do something to help him. In verse 22, the father appeals to the compassion of Christ, yet we see the man has doubts. The father says, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Notice the father says, but if you can do anything. The father, without knowing it, shows a weak faith, shows doubt. This doubt may be in part from the failure of the disciples to cure the boy. This might have served to weaken the faith he originally had. This is true with us today. When one doctor fails to help us, it weakens our faith in the efforts of other doctors. Or when someone we trust lets us down, it can cross over into other relationships and weaken our faith in them. In Matthew's account, we read in Matthew 17, 16, So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Healing of the son would have relieved both the distressed father and his son. The father wants to believe, but he also does not want to get his hopes up too high. The failure of the disciples to heal the, heal the boy had to have been extremely deflating, given the fact that they had cast out demons. But this father, the failure of the disciples, was another punch in the gut. And who knows how many others failed this man and his son in the past. So it looked bleak. There are many times in our lives when the mountain looks so high that nothing is going to help us. Many times our life circumstances can cause us to doubt. This is what the father is experiencing at this point. Doubt can flow from a sense of desperation and hopelessness. Now let me ask you, what in your life has caused you to doubt? And if you are in that state, are you just going to give up and die? Or are you going to reach out? Look there at Mark chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. The father is standing with Jesus with his son. The father did not let his desper desperation lead him to give up. Instead, he followed a second path that we can take when we are overcome by desperation and doubt. He dug deeper, searching for hope, trusting even more. There is a line in one of my favorite movies, Galaxy Quest, that says, never give up, never surrender. That was this father. And that's good advice for any age, in any situation. Notice Jesus responds to the Father's call for help. There are a few ways we can interpret the response of Jesus. One commentator said these words, If you can believe, all things are possible, must be understood as Jesus' rebuke to the Father's lack of faith. But the Father accepted them. It's as if Jesus has said, Look, any man who has faith will not set any limits on what I, the Lord, am able to do. Another commentator observed, The father, instead of doubting the power of Jesus to help him, ought to have had faith like that of the leopard in Mark chapter 1, verse 40. For the leopard said, If you, Jesus, are willing, you can make me clean or heal me. That is where I come down on this issue of faith. You can have faith enough to move mountains, but always if it is God's will. We know he, God, can do it. The question is, will he do it? Jesus explained, as for what you said, if you can, you, Jesus, can do anything, 
The answer is that there is nothing lacking in my faith. And therefore, it is certain that I, Jesus, can perform the will of God in this matter. Jesus' comment would also have caused a man to examine his own faith. The father did precisely that and reacted with a cry that in some sense expresses the feelings of all of us at certain times in our life. He says in verse 24, I do believe, help my unbelief. Jesus was saying, my faith in the Father is total. Where is your faith? Now listen, it is vital for us to realize that Jesus did not reject the Father here when he spoke of his struggle with belief. Jesus did not say, well, your faith is in me is weak, so therefore I reject you. Goodbye. I wish you and your son the best. The man believed. But he also felt his faith was weak. The word translated unbelief in Mark means weak in faith. The man is holding this tension between believing and yet still having questions. His faith was still mixed with unbelief. So in a beautiful display of honesty, he asked Jesus to help him overcome his belief. Have you ever been there in limbo between faith and doubt? I have. This story is one of desperation, one of hope, and one of healing. The statement of the child's father is complex, yet also comforting for anyone who has struggled with doubt. He said, I believe, help my unbelief. Early on in my walk and work for the Lord, I had often thought to the Lord those very words. Help me, Father, to trust you. This man at that moment had believed that Jesus could perform this miracle. Yet he still struggled with doubt. He had seen others try and fail. Maybe he sought different healers and doctors to help his son, only to be let down every time. Even Jesus' disciples could not help the boy in Mark chapter 9, verse 17 and 18. When disappointment becomes the norm, doubt may be your natural reaction. Now, one last thought. Look there at verses 25 through 27. When Jesus saw the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. This man was struggling to find a solution. The father asked Jesus to help him with his faith, and Jesus delivered in a big way. Notice, Jesus did not tear this man down because he had struggles with belief. When you are struggling with belief, do not be afraid to take those struggles to Jesus. We also have people in our church who, if you confide in, can help you. But sometimes that is difficult to do. Christians can be harsh toward other believers who are struggling with doubt. We sometimes have a theology that leaves no room for questioning or struggling in our walk with Christ. It is kind of like they look down their spiritual superior noses at doubters. They see faith as an unwavering loyalty. No questions asked. But the people in our church will help you in dealing with your doubts. Jesus showed the Father's faith, was weak as it was, was well placed in him. Now listen to me. God can handle our struggles and doubts. And I'm not suggesting that we languish in doubt for the rest of our lives. But I am saying that struggling with doubt is not the end of the world unless you take the path of quitting. That is, giving up and turning your back on Jesus, on the Christian faith. I've seen that happen many times. I've had close friends of mine over the years privately confess that after they've heard one of my sermons or read some testimony that they wondered if they were really saved especially those that were saved as children and never experienced a big change in their life. 
Even those in the ministry who have believed and trusted in Christ for years can have doubts. My heart goes out to them, and I try to assure them that's more normal than abnormal, and that Jesus is the solution. Jesus understands why you have doubts, and Jesus understood why this man had doubts. Jesus knows your struggle. He has a heart for you. He loves you. He will be there for you. I believe with all my heart when life is over and all the struggles of life are behind us, it is possible to go to heaven with lots of doubts. And it's possible to go to hell with a lot of certainty. People do it every day. What I'm saying is, you are not alone. You are not the only one who struggles with doubt. This story today is proof the Lord shows compassion to those of us with struggles and doubts. And we as a church have an opportunity to show that same compassion to, to those who share their doubts with us. Our challenge this morning is not to hide our doubt, but to bring our unbelief before a loving God so he can help us overcome our doubts. Remember and say these words of grief spoken by this stricken father. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I am telling you, tragedies will happen in our lives that can and will shake our faith to the core. But don't give up or in when it comes to Jesus. Never give up, never surrender. Amen? And of course, you won't experience this compassion from the Lord unless and until you accept Him as your Savior. And I want to give you an opportunity to do that this morning. If you'd like to become a Christian, if you, if you would like to experience the compassion of Christ, pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. I ask Jesus to forgive me for all my sins and take me to heaven when I die. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you. I hope to see you next week at this same time.